Hi, and welcome back to the C Morning Show, everyone. We're now past the halfway point of our program. And before we get into our uh, first discussion of the morning, we'd like to circle back to an incident that had social media abuzz, which was a video that showed officials detaining a mother who was allegedly trying to abandon her baby at the Pasar Mingu station here in South Jakarta. Yes, and reports uh, suggest that uh, the mother may be experiencing postpartum blues syndrome. Now, so in uh, this segment, let's take a closer look at this issue that affects countless individuals and also families worldwide. Now, joining us today to offer her insight is psychologist Maefni Indriani. Good morning, Maefni. Good, 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 good morning. Good morning. Glad to have you live, actually, instead yes, of uh, yes. online. Usually, we have her online. Yes, she's to be here, here today. We're going to talk right. more, and you're going to elaborate us mm -hmm about postpartum syndrome. Okay, let's just jump into our first question. So what is postpartum uh, blues syndrome and what sets it apart from other postpartum mood disorders? Yeah, when we try to discuss about postpartum blues and postpartum disorders, yeah. we must going back to the general theory. Right. The theory say that postpartum disorders, mm. there are three kinds of postpartum disorders. Mm. Number one is postpartum blues, okay. it's still light. Postpartum depressions, mm. mild depressions, mm. and postpartum psychosis include hallucinations and delusion. It's a kind of mental disorders. Right. Yeah. Are those three uh, based on severity? Like one is heavier than the other, the one? Yes, yes of course. Postpartum blues is uh, the easier one, yeah. easy to recover because uh, after giving birth, the mothers will face a postpartum depression only for two weeks. Okay. And for postpartum depressions, they will face in three months. Mm, okay. okay. And postpartum psychosis more than three months because right. include hallucination and delusion. Right. So two weeks, three months, more, more than, three, than three months. months. Right. And they're all forms of baby blues. The way we like to call it, the simplified is baby blues. Yes, baby right? blues is poor costume blues, the okay. number one, the number type one. number one, okay. the like one. Okay, I see. So uh, let's talk about some of the causes, the reason this could happen. I know that um, mothers or expecting mothers or mothers that have just given birth go through so much, um, for example, lack of sleep. Um, changes. And, yeah, and a lot of uh, adjustments to their own body uh, as well as uh, uh, psychological changes as well. Yes. So could you tell us the cause of postpartum blues? So many causes for the postpartum blues. Yeah. Number one is because the instability of the hormone. Okay. Right. During after giving birth, the hormone is still unstable. Right. They change from the uh, progesterone hormone to the prolactin hormone mm. to produce the breast milk. Yes. Okay. okay, and the cause number two is lack of sleep, mm. lack of rest, mm. and they still in the crisis period. The life transitions become a new matter after giving birth. Right. That is a cause, and most of the causes the expectation from the environment to the new matters. Hey, come on, you are new matters. You mm. must produce a lot of breast milk okay. that you can give to the baby. Yeah. Right. And when the body is still unfit, they cannot produce it, feel so guilty. Okay. That is one of cause of postpartum blues. This is actually very true because in yeah. my household, we have three kids yeah. uh -huh. and all three vastly different. Like for our last kid, it only lasted, breastfeeding only lasted a month and a half. Right. And then we had to switch to formula. We never had to do that in the past. Yep. But I remember um, my wife was still trying to uh, feed the baby naturally and then I said, why don't we just use formula? She's like, because I thought you may not have wanted it. So she put pressure on herself, and I was actually okay with it. I'm like, well, that's what formula is for. If you're unable to produce it, then we, we, we do need to use it. She's like, yeah, I was worried that you didn't want it because I was trying. So then that added pressure on herself to produce right. formula. So again, yeah, that's yeah. a very common one. Happened now, um, Mavi, you mentioned about this postpartum blues um, yeah. occurs mostly mm -hmm. to new mothers. But yeah. how about if this family or this mother is having, you know, the second child, mm. third child, fourth child, will she still um, be able to have this kind of postpartum blues? Yes, of course. Because of the journey of the pregnancy. Right. The mother will, will face a lot of stress during pregnancy, mm. tend to have a postpartum blues, of course. Right, okay. 
Okay, so it, it's it's yeah. not determined that you know it'll occur on uh, the uh, first pregnancy or yeah, first no. birth. It could happen to the first, the second, or the third also. Right. Yeah. Now you didn't mention about environment. Let's talk about <laughs> that more, Paul. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Okay. So you said about environment uh -huh. also. So so that includes husbands mm -hmm. or brothers and sisters or um, mothers and fathers or in-laws mm -hmm. itself, right? Because um, sometimes, you know, different head has its own different opinions, right? <clears throat> Just like uh, you and uh, also your uh, wife, you're okay with formula, but your wife thought in another way, right? So again, um, to make a comfortable environment for a new mother or a mother who just gave birth it's sometimes tricky right yes she may not like about the change um you know towards her body itself yeah. she's exhausted and she feels there's no help from the husband maybe not you paul because <laughs> i know you're a hands-on dad right hands on okay. you you your 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 wife you're you very very good husband paul is a very good husband and um about there's you know the, the more information or you know, instructions from the mother or mother-in-law. Now tell us more about that. Yes, for the collectivistic cultures in Indonesia, the big family. Mm, that's true. <laughs> always have an, so many expectations to the new mother. Mm. Everyone has an opinion, right? Yes, that's true. And sometimes the new mothers feel so confused. Which one should I follow? Yes. Which kind of the best advice for me? Yes. Yes. But the most important thing, we just hear the advice from the medical doctors, right. from the spouse, and from our heart. Right. Yeah. Don't hear anything from the environment. Too many expectations for us. We cannot fulfill all of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, perhaps the best thing is uh, to follow your instincts, right? That's but, true. But I, um, I've heard this, and maybe, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, because um, uh -huh. I've heard that some people experience, and this goes beyond postpartum blues, this perhaps goes to postpartum yeah. psychosis as well, mm. is that certain mothers, when they have this kind of hormonal change, they feel detached from the baby. Yep. And I can use this as our first child as this experience, because for a few months in the very early days, and my wife will tell, me, tell us this to this day, that in the beginning, she couldn't be attached to the child. In fact, she felt very detached. And one of the reasons being, perhaps it was part of her body for so long, for nine, 10 months, right. and then suddenly it was just born, and she, it took a while for her to get acclimated. Mm -hmm. So this seems counterintuitive to me, that a mother could feel detached from their own baby, mm -hmm. which perhaps uh, might be happening to this lady at the train station mm -hmm. as well, where you feel like abandoning the, the child. It's so far detached. Mm -hmm. How can this happen? Is this actually a thing? Yes, because this is a life transition. Okay. A mother must prepare the mental first okay. to receive a new baby, okay. to taking care of the baby all the years, right. all the time. And of course, it takes a long process. Okay. And sometimes a new mother say that this is just a dream. I mm. have a new one right, right now and I, I have a new responsibility. Mm. And what should I do? I don't know. What what should I do to the baby? Mm. So it's like an identity crisis almost, right? Like yes, that's You don't know who you true. are yet as this new yes. person. And sometimes some of women feel uncomfortable with the change, of, with the physical appearance also. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. When we see on the mirror, why my body become like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I experienced that also. <laughs> can yeah. I recover my body like before, yeah, before yeah. I uh, getting pregnant? Right. Yeah. Now let's talk more uh -huh. about um, the, um, you know, uh, the husband's role uh -huh. here yeah. um, into, um, you know, the change uh, of uh, the body mm -hmm. and also the psychology, you know, the mental of the, the wife itself, the new mother especially, right? Yes. So um, it's, for what I see, it's more about, you know, many um, elderly people are giving mm -hmm. instructions or giving motivations to the mother only. After this, you do this. After birth, you do this. Don't do this to the baby, but not to the husband. Yes. Right. So in your point of view, is there any like, you know, education that we need or, um, you know, the surroundings of society needs to give to the husband itself? Yes. It's a simple thing. It's the role of a husband. A new mother needs a shoulder to cry on. Okay. Need someone to listen to her right. naturally. Right without any expectation right. as simple as that mm. so if a husband can do that 
it's so really helpful for the mental condition right. after giving birth just by listening yes listening. i've heard i've heard that sometimes um husbands can try to do too much like trying to solve every problem sometimes a mother doesn't need that yep. just needs to be there to <laughs> experience it with her as opposed to trying to solve every little problem because not everything is solvable okay. right yes so um this can be worrying because as you said there's levels to this. <clears throat> if it's just postpartum yeah. blues hopefully they can just get over it yeah. but if it can get more serious than that what are some of the signs we need to look for in say a family member or a spouse that may be experiencing any kind of postpartum blues? Yes, for the first, they so really irritable in a mental way. Okay. It's not easy for uh, someone after giving birth to listen any kind of comment from the environment. Sometimes for the positive thing, they become angry because of that. Right. Mm. Very, very sensitive. Mm. Okay. Extra irritable, more than yes. usual. Okay. Yes, that's true. And after that, they more anxious than divorce. Mm -hmm. yeah. Worry about her conditions, worry about the baby, right. try to do a lot of things for the baby, yeah. but actually it's just because of the anxious. Right. Okay, so your anxiety levels going up for yes, sure. Yes, of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. And after that, another uh, sign that we can see, they cannot sleep very well. Yeah. And for the others, uh, lost appetite also. Mm. Yeah and not easy for them to recover for the mental and the physical condition after giving birth. Something that's not, uh, yeah. all of these signs will, will likely show up in a, in a new mother anyway. Now, I've got a follow-up question, Doc. Um, so, how do we approach this? Because I do, I've heard of this as well from people's experiences that if a woman's going through baby blues, don't bring up the fact that she's, on baby, <laughs> she's going through baby blues. Like, are you just going through baby blues, right? Don't talk about it, yeah. Like, exactly. <laughs> so what is the best approach then? Okay, we can do the three simple things, right. approaches to the new matters. Right. Number one, in the mind's perspective, let's help new matters to relax in the mind first. Right. No need to worry for everything. You can face it naturally. You can face the crisis. You can adjust with life transition like this. Okay. Maybe we can help new mothers to do the brain relaxation mm -hmm. by the breathing process mm -hmm. and try to relax by do uh, another thing such as maybe enjoy the music, okay. the therapy music. That is number one. And the number two for the physical or biological approach, new mothers must have a good nutrition. Mm. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> good nutrition is, can help to recover the mental condition. We have to make sure that new mothers cannot lack of any kind of vitamin and mineral as a micronutrition. Okay. Because maybe a new mother's lack of zinc minerals, it can increase the level of anxiety. Of course, mm -hmm. right. So medical prescriptions, multivitamin and mineral from the doctors is very important. Right and any kind at the complete food also mm. from any kind of fruits right. protein and another things right. and from soul perspective this is so really important also let's ask new mothers to be grateful with any condition that they face after giving birth mm. no matter what the change of the physical appearance no matter what the gender of the baby, mm. no matter what the volume of the breast milk that yes. they can give to the a baby, no problem. Right. If they cannot fulfill totally, we can help from the formula. Right. Right. No problem. No so problem. the mind, body, and the soul perspective can help new mother to recover the mental condition. Okay. Yeah. Good point. I, I, I bet it's not easy, but yeah. my question is, um, <laughs> From your experience okay. okay so how many patients that you have in, in present range um, that comes to you and have this kind of symptoms of these so many patients oh, and okay. i just saw this study from the international journal right. about the giving birth right. about 35 until 75 mothers around the world will face the postpartum blues right. Okay. And do they realize that they're in that kind of condition? Yes. Okay. They, they know it, but they don't know how to they recover. They don't know how to get it. Right. That's what I've heard. I, I don't know how to recover my condition. I, I'm not in a good state. I right. know it so well. Right, right. That's why we should to give the comprehensive therapy to the new mothers. Mm. Okay. Yeah, uh, and for the postpartum, is less than 10%. 
Postpartum depression. 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 Okay, so the large portion of that is usually just postpartum blues. Postpartum right. blues. We say just because it's the lighter version of it, but also if it goes untreated, it can affect the household. Did you go through this, by the way, Doc, if you don't mind me asking? First child. Maybe. Really? Okay. Yes. And how did you deal with it? Well, I know that, that something's not wrong with okay. it. Something's wrong with me, right? right? I'm, not, I'm not myself. Okay. So, again, I, I stepped back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was it was affecting my breast milk at that mm -hmm. time. Right, because stressor, right? It's a st yes, I was super stressed, no help. Uh, you know, as in, I'm really really tired at that moment. Mm -hmm. Lack of sleep, no, you know, breast milk. It's not yes. like my friends telling me, oh, just relax, eat this, and you'll yeah. have you know loads of breast milk coming out from your body. <laughs> it doesn't go them. like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. So and then I went to um, you know counselor many many times yeah. regarding this matter, mm. and it turns out she said, doctor, you're really stressed. So uh, yeah, because I was determined at that moment, hey, I'm a new mother, I can mm -hmm. do it all. I am always faced to do everything by myself and I was always good at you know facing things. Mm -hmm. But at that moment I have something a new, new child, right? I have something which is which which is alive and yeah. I don't know what to do with it. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I experienced that. But again, it was a little bit more than two weeks, about about a month or a month and a half. But it's no no more than three months that I okay. realized. But so, but prior, so again, a lot of cases here are like Doc, and perhaps <laughs> Doc knows how to handle this better, uh, because self realization and self awareness was the first step. Yep. But prior to seeking medical help, what can people do? Because like you said, realizing is just one step. Yeah. But then I don't know what to do with this. Like, what do you suggest yeah. are some of the things that people can do at home before seeking professional help? Okay, for the first time, the spouse must help the new mothers yes. okay. to recover the conditions such as uh, anxious. Maybe if uh, we, we see new mothers become more anxious than before, okay, ask her to relax the mind first. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can enjoy this music, mm -hmm. you can enjoy this meal. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me... Uh, uh, see so many signs in the outside. Right. Okay. We can enjoy the first mm -hmm. air also. Right. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Mm -hmm. Right. The simple way. But if the natural way cannot recover the condition, please get help. Yes, get help okay. from the professional. Gotcha. Of course, of course. Okay, so again, it is something that you know, as Paul mentioned, we heard of a lot, but again, we don't know what to do, right? So now we have more insight to the um, postpartum uh, yeah. blues, as uh, you mentioned it already. So, you know, your, again, your last advice to give to all the new mothers, especially husbands out there, yeah. to take control of this um, kind of situation. Okay, to have a new baby is a natural process in life. So just enjoy the process, just enjoy the crisis, and naturally, after three months, you can adjust with the natural life. Okay. So don't push yourself to become perfect per parents mm. at that time. Mm -hmm. No need to do that. Yeah. Just enjoy the process, be grateful, and try to learn everything from the professional, not from any kind of myth. That's true. Remember. Good that. point. <laughs> By the way, can I can I add something? I mean, this is just in addition to what Doc already said, yeah. which I agree, is the fact that. Um, when you have a child, especially for the first time, you think you can control everything, but the, that's the last thing you can do. You, you just, it, everything um, that comes with childbirth, pregnancy, kids growing up, is really kind of out of your control. And the best thing you can do is just kind of accept what has already been dealt with to you and yes. just kind of deal with it from there, right? I mean, that's it's very true. hard. You can't I control all of these things. <laughs> these things true. just happen. So true. again, thank you for your time and for thank dropping you. by. Finally, good to have you in the studio and swing by anytime. We love talking about these kind of topics. Thank you, you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Right, um, we have to take another short break here on the program, but in case you joined us late this morning, don't worry. We're going to recap some of our earlier top stories just for you when we return. Stay with us here on the Sea Morning Show.